Our next crossing will take Aquarius around Somalia and into the Red Sea. This video will show you the tools we use and what we think about when we plot a passage. For those of you who are looking to cruise part-time or full-time or maybe even trying to circumnavigate the globe, this video is for you. Cue the intro. In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. Our next crossing will take us along this path. And, one can see, we will be sailing around Somalia and invariably think about Somalia pirates. One of the most dangerous places on the planet is thought to be Mogadishu, and we are going to be about 250 nautical miles east of Mogadishu. No one can forget about the movie Black Hawk Down, released in 2001, about an event in 1993, almost 30 years ago. Or even the movie Captain Phillips, about the Maersk, Alabama, hijacked in 2009. So yes, we do worry about pirates. But, to be honest, we don't worry as much as one would think. In reality, the probability of pirates is actually fairly low. And, in my research, there hasn't been an incident with a sailing yacht in this area since 2011. But, this said, we plan to remain at least 250 nautical miles east of Somalia during the passage. In this video, we show how we use OpenCPN to do most of our passage planning. We also use some other tools like predict wind, marine traffic, and avionics. If you would like to reach out to us to get your OpenCPN set up like ours, contact us on Patreon. Let's open up OpenCPN. Now, here in yellow, you can see some of our old tracks, and these are our actual tracks. If you turn tracking on and the computer's on, it actually saves your track for you. Now what we'll do is we'll use the Create Track tool to create a rough track. So what we'll do is we'll put a couple points down near Tanga. We'll fill in our plot about 250 nautical miles off the Somali coast. Then we're going to come around the east side of Sukutra and we'll anchor there. And we want to stay there until the winds change and you'll see that later. So we've zoomed in on Tanga. And here what we're going to do is we're going to repair the route a little bit around the beginning of the route. It really doesn't matter if it's perfect or not, but we want to be close so that we can get the distances right. So here what we'll do is we'll check to make sure that we're at least 250 nautical miles from the Somali coast as we head north. And what we plan to do is anchor at Sukutra until the winds change. And the approximate date of the wind change is about September 15th. So now we're zoomed in on Sukutra. And I'd like to get the route just a little bit closer. I don't know the exact coordinates of the pier, but I will get them later. But this time we'll just use Google Maps and we'll get close and we'll be able to get our route just about right. So we're supposed to drop the hook right about here. And voila, there is our planned route for the passage. Now we can see that the passage is 1,581 miles. So let's do a little bit of math and see how many days it's going to take us. We average about six knots. So in the end, it should take us about 11 days. Being that the passage is 11 days, there's no way to tell what time you'll get into the destination. The only thing that's gonna determine what time I leave is the distance from Tanga to the first turn because that turn might be a sail change 
and I would much rather do the sail change in the middle of the day. Let's calculate how long it's going to take to get to that turn and make sure that we get there in the afternoon. That first turn ends up being about 300 nautical miles from Tanga. So, on the day of the departure, we'll leave in the morning and end up there in the afternoon. One of the great things about OpenCPN is it has historical wind data. And what we can do with this is look at what historically the winds were over the last 30 years. So what we're looking at is August, September, and October. And you can see that August and most of September, we have a direct downwind all the way to Sukutra. But then in October, everything changes. And that's what we're looking for. We want to wait in Sukutra for that wind change so that we can have more of a downwind sail into Djibouti. OpenCPN also has historical current data. So we can look at the approximate currents that we're going to get. And in this case, I'm not going to adjust my route at all because of the currents. I can't move it in and pick up the fast currents moving up north of Somalia because I don't want to be that close to Somalia. And I don't want to go out too far because I might get the wraparound current, which is going south, which would be against me. So it looks like I've got just about the right route if this current data is correct. But we'll be looking more into that with Predict Wind right before we leave. The next thing we'll look at is storms and their tracks. And in OpenCPN, they have historical data on all the storms. So you'll see in this data that August and September look really clean along our route. But there is a storm that happened in the past in October. So by October, I should be moving into Djibouti where there won't be any storms that hit us. The next thing I do is open up marinetraffic.com. And here what I want to see is if there's any fishing vessels that are congregating. I want to see where the shipping traffic is and what type of ships are moving. And I also want to look at where the shipping lanes are. Just before I leave Tanga, I'll log into marinetraffic.com again and I'll take screenshots along my route so I can see where all the ships are. Before I take off to Sukutra, I'll also get Google Overlays installed into my OpenCPN. Like here, you see the Google Overlays that I had for the Maldives. Well, now let's open up Predict Wind and take a look at Predict Wind. From now until we leave in August or September, we're going to be taking a look at predict when to pick the right weather window. But you can see now it kind of looks like we could probably make this crossing right now and uh, it would be fine. But we're not going to be leaving for a couple months. But I just wanted to show you how we look at the weather and look at the currents with predict wind. And we also look at the waves and other things with predict wind. But I wanted to finish this video off with a video that I did, which is basically a screen recording of OpenCPN while I was making a crossing from the Maldives to the Seychelles and a fishing boat was coming up dropping their nets. Let's first look at a few things that make it possible for OpenCPN to work like a full-blown sharp plotter. We have a Vesper XB8000, Wi-Fi enabled, connected to our NEMA 0183 and NEMA 2000 data buses. Thus, all the AIS data and the rest of the NEMA data is transmitted over Wi-Fi. And when the computer is connected to the Vesper Wi-Fi, we get all the NEMA data on OpenCPN. So, we get a moving map with all the AIS data. And the great thing about it is OpenCPN only costs a donation. Yes, it's free, but you should donate to the software people that develop and maintain it. And here's how to set up your OpenCPN connection to Wi-Fi. Now let's get back to the OpenCPN video, Aquarius versus Amula fishing vessel. Here I am, approaching an Amula fishing vessel, about to cross my path. 
At this point, I was about 50 minutes or so away from crossing its path, so I decide to turn down and go behind it. But then, I find out it's laying eggs. Well, that changes everything. I don't want to go behind a fishing vessel if it's pulling a long line or a net. Just a quick note on the nets and the long lines these fishing vessels deploy. Here you can see a long line, and here's a net. And you can see that Aquarius would easily go right over them without a problem. But if the net looked like this one and it was pulled tight, what would happen then? It might be pulled near the surface and catch me. If Aquarius did get caught in the net, I hear that some fishermen can demand payment on the spot so they can repair their long lines and nets. I didn't want to take a chance, so I turned to go above them. There is no way I will cross above a net within a mile of a fishing vessel deploying it. So, I changed my course to go above or in front of the fishing vessel. All the blue lines you see were my attempt to calculate at which point Aquarius would hit the Amula fishing vessel and I would simply point above it. Here is the speed of the Amula fishing boat. Keep an eye on it as the fishing vessel will change its speed and change its course to try and ensure Aquarius does not cross in front of them. Let's look at how the situation played out and afterwards I will let you know what I should have done to make it easier for me to pass in front of the fishing vessel. Here you can see the Amula 2082 MTR has turned, making it more difficult for Aquarius to pass in front of her. And here you can see the long line beacon moving with the current. I have heard that fishing vessels are superstitious about other vessels crossing in front of them. And this Amula is doing everything to cross in front of Aquarius. Logically, this does make sense. Given a chance, there are people that would disrupt or even disable these fishing vessels. If I was pulling a few hundred meters of nylon line behind Aquarius, I could really mess up their night. They only know that I'm an American vessel named Aquarius, so both Aquarius and Amula fishing vessel are trying to cross in front of each other for good reason. And we are a bit more maneuverable because we're not deploying a long line in the middle of the night. I ended up winning, but it was close. And you can see Amula did everything she could to cross in front of Aquarius up until the last minute. So what should I have done? I should have shut down the AIS transmitter so that Amula would not see Aquarius on their AIS receiver. And I should have turned off the navigation lights within five miles of the Amula fishing vessel. If I had done this, I would have probably passed in front of them without them being the wiser, and we probably would not have come within a few nautical miles of Amula 2A2. Fair winds. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you want to watch more of us, click one of those.